Many have taken the position that Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, was a pirate who was guilty of all sorts of bad deeds. But was he? Was he really guilty? Or had he been pardoned by the king and the governor of North Carolina? Is it possible that one of the king's own governors, who was fully aware of the pardon, decided to take matters into his own hands and order an attack on a cleared man in a territory that he had no jurisdiction? If tried in court, would the pardon stand today? Or would the Virginia governor be guilty of bad deeds? Hey folks, we're here in Bath, North Carolina, and boy, are we having a great time. It's a little windy, a little rain today, but this is the Blackbeard Festival. Almost 300 years ago, maybe exactly 300 years ago, he lost his head not far from here in Ocracoke. But people say they actually walk the streets here in Bath, North Carolina, and sell these very waters. Let's go have a look. <laughs> Dear sweet Lord, is that Bigfoot or Blackfoot or Blackbeard? I don't know. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Is that Blackbeard or Bigfoot? I don't know. Are you, are, so what are your thoughts about Blackbeard? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I think he was, uh, I think he was just like the rest of us, just out trying to make a buck and uh, yeah. things went wrong. <laughs> it happens, folks, it happens. <laughs> you can't have a good festival without a good mix of vendors. Certainly the allure of Blackbeard attracts the proper assemblage. How, how many people are in the parade, Kevin? I, I can't tell. I think there are about 500 people at least, 500? maybe. 500? Maybe more. This is the greatest collection of, of people dressed like Blackbeard in the world. It's in just, the entire world? Yes. In history? That's what our friend Kevin says, and I believe Kevin. Very provocative. <laughs> mm, trouble brewing. Little pirates. You know, this town is the oldest town in North Carolina, established in 1705. And this is all about the 300th anniversary of Blackbeard, well, losing his head. And, and ma'am, what's your name? <laughs> Chris. Chris, and who's this with you? Bonnet. This is Bonnet. Bonnet, oh, this is Bonnet. Oh, you're an important part of history, right? And this is? I'm short finger. Short finger. Let's see. Did you lose one? Or? <laughs> Tell me about Blackbeard's festival. This is in celebration of the last days of Blackbeard. He, uh, you know, sailed over to Bath to uh, accept a pardon and then uh, and meet with the governor and then left here to go back to Ocracoke. And so this is the the last days that he that we really know where he was with friends and family before he went back to Ocracoke and Things just didn't met, well, met an unti uh, untimely demise, you know. I mean, how does that make you feel, the fact that he should have, he, that shouldn't have happened? I mean, it just shouldn't have happened, should it? Well, as Steve Bonnet, he wasn't really a friend of mine in his last few days. <laughs> so we kind of parted uh, as foes, but yes, he, what happened wasn't really particularly fair. <laughs> yeah, the, the governor of Virginia had no right sending ships down to capture him or take his life. What does this mean to you? I mean, the, the, the fact that, you know, folks are coming out to celebrate history like this. I think it's great to celebrate history. You know, you can't, you don't know where you're going if you don't know where you came from. Hello, sir. <laughs> what is that that you have there, sir? Oh, that's Fear not, governor. I'll protect you, protect sir. Me, sir. <laughs> protect me. That's, what is it? That's one of those what magical things. <laughs> yes. Lieutenant, watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. It'll burn them, sir. It'll steal your soul. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Oh, doing fantastic. This is amazing work that you're doing. Tell us what's going on. Thank you very much. Well, this is a cannon that I have cast in bronze in the foundry. And so you actually made this? Yes, this is what I do for a living. Okay. I make historic bronze cannon. A uh, very traditionally way, this is an investment cast here. We do also have some sand castings. And what I am doing now is chasing the gun, okay. which means cleaning it, filing it. This is 
very, very much how it comes out of the furnace, or once it's done casting. Sing in with chisels, files, and brushes. I'm going through taking all those out, making it absolutely smooth, and taking any defect out. So they're all functioning. Uh, they're all functioning guns, absolutely. Wow. So let me ask you. So yes. are there many people doing what you're doing now? No. Uh, as far as I know, I'm the only one left. Take this little this one chisel. Yes. And this is one. Thing and oh, like those. Little, yes, uh, those things yes. in there. Pottery. A little harder. Go ahead. There you go. Ah. Find the next one. You are chasing the gun, sir. Ah, and these are simple foundry flaws that come out. If they're yeah. difficult, it might require some hand filing after this right. is finished. And hand finishing, these types of guns all have to be hand finished. In doing this gun work, it's part engineering and you have to be an artist. So the artistry. Yes, the artistry. And a lot of times, you don't get artists and engineers in the same brain. One thing's for sure, there's a lot of drama and suspense at a Blackbeard Festival. When the four and six pound cannons show up and are positioned for firing, almost everyone assumed a good viewing position. Everyone knows something big is getting ready to happen. The four and six pound is the weight of the cannonballs and not the cannons. They're much heavier than that. The cannons are extremely impressive and so is the commitment of the handlers. Safety is always a big concern. We'll be right back. I think you know what's coming up on Life in the Carolinas.